Hello. I am Todd Black, creator of Guardians Home, Tokyo Blade Detectives. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, mainly at, at Guardians underscore comic. And you are watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to another episode of Rapid Fire. The concept is simple. It is 11 questions, 9 to 15 minutes long, give or take, depending on how I edit. And we are in a one-on-one -on -one interview with a very talented and creative person in the entertainment industry. So who's our guest today? Our guest today is a returning guest. He was back on the show in April talking about his various comics that he had created and written and had a wonderful conversation talking about Tokyo Blade Detective uh, issue six. <laughs> We're joined today by the ever talented Todd Black. How are you doing today? Doing all right, Kurt. Although I must say it is freaking cold in Illinois right now. <laughs> like, dear gosh. Up here in Canada, it is pretty cold as well, too, here. So, Canada. Weather aside here, welcome back to the show. You're, of course, coming here today with an amazing comic, as you hinted upon back in April when you talked to us last, which you should also check out the interview when he was back here on the channel. Tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking today, though. I am the Todd Black, and uh, that profile pic does not perfectly represent my hair, as you can see. I am the creator of multiple comic series, not the least of which Tokyo Blade Detectives, which I'm talking about today. Uh, Tokyo Blade Detectives is an anime comic that I have written. We're six issues in as of this current Kickstarter, and it's a project that I've been wanting to make for a long time, and I'm very honored to have made it th uh, this deep so far. But you've also done a couple of other things as well, too, though, and not just Tokyo oh. Blade Detectives. <laughs> I mean, I may have like 45 books under my name. Maybe. Just maybe. Just a few. Yeah. Just a few. Um, poco. <laughs> so let's talk about Tokyo Blade Detectives because, you know, this was something that, that was an amazing concept when I first heard about it. And I, I've since looked at it since then as well, too. And you have a great style, a great batch of characters here. The fact that you have an, another ongoing and Kickstarter campaign that's been completely funded as of this interview is an incredible achievement as well. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Have I hit my funding goal? <laughs> but you're always looking to do more with these types of campaigns, aren't you? I see it as, more, as an extension of the creative process because you can get funded on a Kickstarter relatively easy if you have the right backers and the right support base. But I feel, and I know a lot of other creators feel this way, is that the other job is to expand the fan base, to not just have your loyalists, which is always important, have something that expands out so that someone randomly can go, you know, that looks like a cool comic. Let me go and check that out. So for like this series, I always try and get around a hundred backers because my first one did that. My second one did that. My third missed by two. I was really mad about that. Uh, four was good. Five was my biggest ever. And right now we're at almost 60 backers with about two wow. weeks to go. So I'm pushing to get that hundred again so that I can say, you know, we're averaging a hundred and then people really, really love this story about Tokyo and you know, it, it might just be a personal goal, but it means a lot to me. So I'm pushing to do my best. And that's why I'm here with you, Kurt, once again. Well, let's talk about Tokyo Blade Detective. For those that don't know anything about this, this particular series, tell us what it's all about then. It's an anime style comic. It's set uh, 200 years or so in the future. Japan has been ravaged by war, burned to the ground, rebuilt with technology. To try to stop the madness, they make a law that no one can break. No guns allowed. But that makes a power vacuum. So they make laser swords. You can't say the other thing. This leads to five factions rising up to try and overthrow the government. And Tokyo is in a state of perpetual chaos. Enter a 16-year-old girl named Miko, who is just trying to get by in life when she gets a case that changes everything. And that was the first arc. And the second arc, which we have going on now called The Contract, is Miko and her partner Mishio trying to defend a client against an assassin known as the Ninth Tail, who is one of the Nine Tails, a reference to Japanese folklore. The current issue is one I like to nickname The Raid because it's one of my most action-packed comic issues I have ever done. So what is it about action and, and this type of world setting that you've created that sparks maybe new readers to read the series from the beginning? I think it's just a very fun world. I mean it when I say it's like an anime comic because we go for that visual aesthetic, that kind of feel. And yeah, I have some fun with it because everything in the world is meant to be realistic. It's just super advanced. Like I said, it's 200 years of the future. Technology has rebuilt the country. 
and everything is rooted in science. It'll look like magic, it'll feel like magic, but there's an explanation for everything. And that gives me a lot of leeway to say, oh yeah, these people are gonna use technology this way. These people are gonna be using the laser swords this way. And we see that with the ninth tail because like uh, in one of the opening shots we have on the Kickstarter, he phases straight through a wall and it looks so dang cool, but it's just technology. And that's, that's the power of his suit. So I just, I have a lot of fun with it. And I think it's that thrill of, okay, what's the next arc going to bring? Like, how am I going to show off the five factions next? What other technologies are going to be shown off? And we, we have some really big ideas that we want to get to. And that's why every Kickstarter is important. So talk about the team then that, that's surrounded with this particular series. Because you obviously have to give credit where credit's due when it comes Absolutely. to the amazing art that you you have in this comic as well. Yes, just to be clear, I am, like it says on the, on the tag, I am the writer-creator. <laughs> But my art team is absolutely astounding. I've got a, my, my interior artist is Lam Vivan. I met him online via Facebook, ironically enough. And he, it took me a while to find someone like him to do the art style that I wanted. He's absolutely crushed it with the sword fights and the, the way the characters are shown off. And then my cover artist is Alex Garcia, a longtime collaborator of mine. He absolutely kills it on cover art. And then uh, I've had a few editors over the course of the series. My current one is Matt Shore, who's also a comic creator. Uh, definitely go check out his works and we uh alex is also the uh, letterer he does a really good job on that so we have a lot of fun making these issues and each page is a lot of fun to see how llama is going to create it and especially when we get to the action action bits where i just like ooh, i can't wait to see how he handles this it's a lot of fun so then looking at the script that that you created for this and and what people are going to expect what was the scene that you you got back from your amazing art art team that was way more amazing once you saw it drawn from script format. Ooh, okay, well, we're not fully done with the comic. We are oh, okay. about we're about at page fifteen right now, but let's see. That's a good one. Okay, there was a cover. Uh, you know the 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 Nightwing series that's going on right mm -hmm. now. Okay, well, there was a cover on one of those books, and it's basically Nightwing going from the top of a staircase down, changing, and then appearing as himself in front of a crowd. Mm -hmm. And I just love that one shot kind of look and so in this story miko and misha have to take their client down a flight of stairs to get to a safe room and so i'm like okay here's the cover that i want you to reference do that except you know with an action sequence and he crushed it uh, and we had to say like very small things but the, the flow of it then like going down the stairs and fighting along the way was a lot of fun and these are the things you just like references are everywhere and then you take those references and then you make them your own. This is a great example of that. And Lom crushed it. He's like, okay, I think I can do that. And he totally did it. So just like, thank you, Lom. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't wait to see that uh, that thank particular you. scene then. It should be amazing. As the, the creator and writer of this world, do you think it could survive in, in the world you created with Tokyo Blade Detectives? No. <laughs> that was quick. I'm a wimp. Gosh dang it, man. One thing I, I clearly establish in like the very beginning is that to live in this version of Tokyo, you have to be lucky or good. And Miko ain't got time for luck. Uh, like if you remember the first scene of the book, she kills someone in like one page. Her first word is die. <laughs> she she ain't got time for this crap. I guess if I want if we wanted to be fun, would be a jerk. I could live in the world as long as it wasn't in Japan, <laughs> because it's crazy there. And you actually have to wonder how the rest of the world is, which we will address eventually in the story, especially in Tokyo with the five factions, with the laser swords, with crime. It seems like a place you can live in, and people do live there. But it's literally like that balancing act of, okay, things are getting crazy. Okay, they're going to balance out. Okay, things are getting too nice. Oh, they're going to balance out. And in fact, one of the next arcs is going to show the absolute chaos these five factions can cause in just a few days. It's going to show you just how much people fear these events happening. So they aren't ignorant in the world, but they're like, I'm trying to make it through day by day, but I know that on any day, I can die. And actually, we referenced that in uh, Miko's origin story, which we talked about in issue number four, mm -hmm. no, three, where we talk about how her parents passed away. Because that was just a random thing that happened. That could happen to anyone on any of your good day. And I it would be that guy that I'd be just like, you know, today's going to be the best day ever. And then one of them comes up and kills me. Like, that, that is my lot in life, all right? Oh, that's great. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. It's like cyberpunk, but you're not the main character. Yeah. I'm, I'm like it's like that war movie where like oh i really like that kid i hope he doesn't die and he dies like one scene in that's me <laughs> back in april we talked about comic conventions and everything like that and back then things were 
eventually kind of getting back to whatever normalcy. sensible norm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You said it, not me. You had a conversation in, in a talk. You were going to be talking at a panel. I want to touch base on, with you on how that actually went for you. Oh, yeah. I uh, it was at Planet Comic Con in Kansas City, Missouri, and I did a panel called uh, Believe in Your Comics, uh, an introduction to how to make indie comics. Um, Believe in Your Comic is my personal philosophy in terms of comic making, because if you don't have faith in your own book, then what's the point? You know, like I believed in Guardians. I believed in Home and 10,000 Miles in Tokyo, and I believed that I was making a story that deserved to be told even if it wasn't something that could work in the market, should work in the market, might not be as visually enticing or whatever you want to say. Um, I was looking back at my some of my older comics the other day, and I was just like, wow, I really approved that, <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> you look back with, with the experience that you have, and at, at the first couple of times, you're just like, dang, I'm just glad this is out. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, we could have done that better. <laughs> and, no. But uh I, I did the panel. I've been trying to get this panel on for a long time, and Planet Comic Con let me do it. And I got about twenty to thirty people, which oh. is about twenty to thirty people more than I was expecting. <laughs> I don't mind saying I'm a creative mind, but I don't feel as although I'm someone that people would want to listen to. And yet, twenty to thirty people came to that panel, and they asked me questions. I made sure that it wasn't about me. I wanted to make sure it was about them. So I introduced myself. I talked. I told them really quickly, you know, my origin story and you know why. I just kind of deserve to be doing this panel in one way or another. And I'm like, okay, open questions. What do you got? And we had some really good ones. I mean, some people asked me from the VR perspective, which I felt I could touch on because of the people I worked with. Others were like, you know, how do you deal with this kind of writing problem or this kind of writing problem? Some people asked me about Kickstarter, which I really appreciated because I have a lot of experience in that now. And even if I just helped one person that day, that makes it worth it. Because as some people have passed on their knowledge on to me, I have now passed my knowledge on to them. And hopefully that leads to more indie comic creators, which we absolutely do need. You mentioned that there's two weeks left in this particular campaign yeah. here, and you're looking for 40, 40 more people, which is always great to see to at least get your, your milestone of 100 people, which is yeah. a, a good goal to have here. What challenges have you faced in this particular campaign, especially with not only social media promotion, but maybe yourself internally in terms of trying to get goals and- be completely honest. I think I actually got a little spoiled with my last campaign because the gap between Tokyo number four and Tokyo number five was over a year. After we got done with the first arc, I took some time off to go and do other projects. And by the time we got back with number five, I was like, you know what? It's been a while. I don't know if people still want to read it. And let's just see if people will do. And I had one of my most successful Kickstarters ever. And I'm like, Okay, surely this will carry over <laughs> to the sixth one. We are at our funding goal, which I am grateful for. Um, we actually got funded on my birthday, which is yeah. nice. And uh, I had a nice little surge yesterday. I got someone randomly on Twitter today. It's kind of like the creator's di dilemma of when do you have faith in people to back you again versus you've got to go out there and get them to back you again. Mm -hmm. I have less people now than I did in my first week of my of the last Kickstarter. I don't know how to explain it, but it's it's how it is. And so you have to learn to adapt. And, and people, including you, have been like, that is bad. But, you know, you did reach your funding goal. And that's true. And that's the important thing. The comic is going to get made. I have reached my goal. I'm like almost at $1,000 right now, which is great. My goal was seven fifty. dollars So I have to, you know, adjust and say, if it was to end tomorrow at like 62 backers, I lost a lot of backers. Something happened. Redouble my efforts for when number seven comes out so that I won't have this happen again. It's that adjustment of trying, you know, do better the next time. Trying to vie for people's attention with almost 8 billion people now in the world, uh, apparently, <laughs> uh, is, yeah. is extremely difficult. And now that we have social media collapses on multiple levels and people scrambling to find the newest thing to promote themselves on uh, is even more difficult. <laughs> yeah. And th there could be a thousand reasons why I'm not getting the backers. One is just burnout. Like there's, there's a lot of projects going on right now and some of them are big, some of them are small and, but you know, there's only so much money to give around. Another one, which multiple people have told me is that, you know, times are really hard right now, which I have always, I always address them in Kickstarters because I don't want to force anyone to pledge. That's kind of defeating the purpose. If you don't have money to pledge, then you don't have money to pledge. And if that happens around a certain core people that happens to pledge to every one of mine, that's going to affect me and that's fine. It might be that they don't see that the Kickstarter is up, which has happened multiple times in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why, Kurt, but 
every time, every time I get a Kickstarter done, I, I send out the updates, which I'm, as I'm hopefully you saw, mm -hmm. but I send out the updates to say like, hey, Kickstarter words have been sent out. You know, let me know if you don't get them. And then I'll get like a couple people months and months later, including one during this Kickstarter. So it's like, wait a minute, I didn't get my rewards for number five. I'm like, I sent them. I know I did. And so, you know, then I'm like playing catch up and yep. trying to do right by them and all that. So there's a lot of reasons I'm not where I'm at. I just got to keep pushing. I got two weeks left. Just got to stay positive and you know, try and get as much as I can. As always, you're, you're a talented person. You're, you're looking forward to creating many more works in the future as well, too. I can't wait to see what else you decide to come up with next. And it's always a pleasure chatting with you on, on the show here. Thank you, Kurt. And I do have some new projects in the works, and I promise to try and come back on when the time is right. <laughs> Wonderful. Before I let you go, though, where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course, where can we find the Kickstarter campaign on the internet? My Twitter is there, uh, at guardians underscore comic. That's also my Instagram handle, so look me up on both of those. You can also see the link to the uh, Kickstarter, Tokyo Blade Detectives number six, and you can just type that up on Kickstarter site, Tokyo Blade Detectives number six, and you'll find me really easily. And I'm also, I just uploaded all my comics to Global Comics, Ooh. major comic site, which has been going, growing a lot recently. So you'll find a Guardian's Home, 10,000 Miles, and the first volume of Tokyo Blade Detectives on there. Go and check that out if you're interested in my books. For Tokyo, you can actually get all my books for certain reward tiers, including a $15 digital reward tier where you'll get basically 40 books for 15 bucks. That's definitely an incentive for me to head back over there again and, and grab some more digital content that I'll love to read. <laughs> yes, please pledge. <laughs> Well, like I said, that is this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. And on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash c forward slash tgtmedia. A variety of other social media platforms, which you can all find on the new link tree for Two Geeks Talking, which is linktree.com forward slash two geeks talking. That's the word two, not the number two. And that's everything rather than me trying to say absolutely everything that I'm part of, because even I forget. So it's all there for you wonderful, talented people that have been following the show for, for this many years. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help find, uh, bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on to Geek Stalking. All right.